Hello, welcome to my new video. This is my red elm vase project, and I think it came out really well. It has some really nice colors in it, some paduke, mesquite, maple, yellow heart, even has a, a neck design. So this one was a really um, nice use of this wood. I never used red elm before, so this is my first time to turn it. And I have to say, if I can find some more, I'll use it. This is another brand new wood I picked up, or new wood for me. Uh, this is elm. The store I went to had quite a bit of elm. I had calico elm, spalted elm, but it felt like it was too soft and too light for me to turn. But there was some boards in the back, and this one felt um, hard enough, and it also had some nice character to it so um, we're gonna give a go at turning this elm not sure if I'm gonna make a bowl or a vase out of it as I only picked up one board but see how it turns really like the grain on this elm it's really nice looking so I think I've got enough for a vase and I'm gonna continue the shape like I would my vases uh, start off pretty small and uh, climb up a little bit different than I do a, a bowl, but let's go on to the next layer. This one turned down well. Again, the grain is really nice on this. I'm anxious to see what it looks like with some clear coat on it, but I'm going to continue this um, into hopefully a really nice vase. So I've left it a little thick, uh, gives me some room in case I want to change the shape slightly and also to sand down any chips but it'll end up being a lot thinner uh, when I'm finished maybe about a quarter of an inch to five sixteenths so thanks for watching looking good just got through turning this layer down um, again the woods a little chippy in certain spots so I've had to allow it to be a little thicker and then sand it down but it's going to be a nice piece when I get through with it. Well, it turned good. Um, again, I'm still leaving it a little thick um, so that I can change the shape slightly or maybe get rid of some flat spots or add a little bit more curve as I go. But uh, now it's on to the fun part, getting the design laid out. So I will glue some stuff up and show you the next layer it turned down really well just like I expect this would to on this elm uh, base that we're working on um, we've got a layer of maple on here and we just need to um, basically turn it and split this ring off so we can work on a design for it so um, let's go ahead and do that i'll start just rounding this layer up let's see it hit Well, I'll get this cut off the lathe and we'll go work on a design for this. I just spent the last hour, hour and a half cutting pieces for this pattern here. And as you can see, I number how many pieces I need and then I also check mark them off when they're done being cut. But this is for our red elm vase or this elm. And I was wanting to do some um, browns, reds, yellow. I'm thinking that's going to look good with the maple background and the color of the vase. So here are all my pieces. It's a mesquite for the brown, paduke for the red, um, some maple and yellow heart. But I just need to go start uh, on this first segmented ring and I'll show you what that looks like. We just got the uh, glued up ring onto our piece and it's dried. And now we've got it mounted on the lathe. So 
our goal is to turn this and split a ring off of here. We want a, about a quarter inch uh, ring for um, our pattern. I'm always a little anxious to see how the colors work on this first uh, segmented ring, but um, we'll go ahead and get it uh, turned. Here's a little closer view of what we were trying to accomplish. So we've got that layer nice and um, to the right thickness as the other two layers. Um, so it's pleasing, but now we just need to cut some more pieces for our next ring. This is our next layer that uh, has had time to dry and is glued up. It's on the lathe, so let's get ready to turn this. And we also want to split this down to a quarter inch ring or so to match these others. So let's get to turning. Here's what it looks like. The sun's starting to set, so it's making the shot kind of hard to see, but we've got the thickness of the layer we want. Our pattern's continued, so now all we need to do is just cut some more pieces, wait for those to dry, and get another ring glued up on there. We've got this piece glued up and ready to turn. It was a little bit smaller, this last ring, than I would have liked. It doesn't overhang a whole lot, but what I'll do to compensate for that is I'll turn this up uh, more flat instead of uh, curved right here. Because all I need is really a quarter inch for this next ring. But let's get this turned. So here's what it looks like after we split that layer off. And everything is lining up and looking good. We just need to go add that next layer to it. We're back with our Elm project. We've had this layer glued up on there, which was, uh, again, it was a drop from this ring here that we split. We're gonna turn it down to the right thickness of a quarter inch, and then we will glue on this other half of this ring here. But pretty simple. We're just gonna turn this one down and get it sanded flat. So here's what it looks like from this angle. It looks uh, pretty good as far as the alignment of the design, um, the thickness of our ring. So we are gonna go glue that next ring up on there and get ready to turn it. I was able to get uh, this last ring that came from the half of this ring glued back and it's dried for a couple days we've had some weather right now it's in the low 40s so it's kind of chilly out here but i made some alignment marks with the colored pencil um, sometimes the pencil's hard to see on some of these darker colors got it glued on and we're just going to follow the shape um, we need to get this to the right thickness and then clean up the inside and then we can go and glue up this split from this ring which would be another layer of maple so let's get turning here's what it looks like with that layer turned down uh, patterns come together so really nice got a little bit of sanding cleanup to do on the inside but um, won't take very long we'll just keep adding these layers to it and i want to leave a little bit of my thickness so i'm not sure how much i'm going to turn this in at this this layer but I want to leave a little bit of room so it's looking good well, our maple ring has been glued on and set and you can see it's a little thick so we want to take this down to the same width as this um, we've also started to um, take our shape and slightly turn it back inwards um, we're going to gradually do that the next uh, layer will be another layer of South American walnut, and then we're really going to kick it back in and make a nice shoulder, and then onto a neck up in that direction. But pretty simple. We want to turn this down to our shape, um, sand the top flat after we've thinned it down, and of course clean up the inside. But let's get to turning. Here's what it looks like now that we've got that 
turned and we just need to cap it off with this other layer of South American Walnut. So I'll go find a, a layer for that and get it on. But one thing I like to do um, is because now that we've got our shape kind of finalized and we're working on this top half, all this in here really will never get touched again by the tool. When I'm working, I usually just go past uh, whatever layer I have and bite into the next layer just a little bit. So um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of finalize the inside a little bit because once I get this neck on and the vase is a lot taller, it'll be a lot more difficult to do that. So I'm going to hit it with some 120 and kind of give that a good cleanup and then we'll add this layer of South American Walnut on here. I've glued on another layer of our uh, South American Walnut. So we're just going to clean that up really quick and then we will cut some more red elm and add a couple more layers to it, the top of this. But let's get this turned real quick and move on to the next step. And there's that. That looks good. Well, I've glued up another ring of elm onto our bowl, and um, we want to start, um, this is what I call the shoulder of this vase or this vessel, and so I'm going to start on this, this ring, I'll start to gently roll it back in. On this next ring after it, it'll take a much harder curve in, and then with a third one, we get to what I call the neck. So it's a it's a process of usually two or three rings to get to that uh, transition. But what I first want to do is get rid of all of these uh, square edges on this outside. And I am just going to get as close to the last layer that I've turned as possible. And then I'm slowly going to see what the curve looks like. What's the best look for it as I cut back in. got that in pretty close and again um, it tapers out here slightly but one thing I like to do is every time I get a chance is to go ahead and sand some and I'm hoping I won't have to sand any of this uh, part with any of my rougher grits like let's say 120 because I've already done that and I just have to work in this area and, and keep on working out and if I do this right the opening will be large enough for me to stick my hand in there and um, finish sanding with some of the higher grits well that looks good so what I need to do uh, besides a little bit of sanding is uh, to get this top flat and cut another ring get it glued up and I'll show you what it looks like when I get it back on the lathe wanted to show where we're at on this project um, this layer is glued and dried ready to go so uh, we're going to turn this outside uh, follow this uh, nice um, curve back here up to what I call the shoulder and then into the neck of this piece and then we'll work on the inside but it usually takes about three layers to get to where I do that turn back into the neck so we've got at least one more layer to go here, but let me get the phone mounted up so I can get some um, good videos and we'll work on turning this down. So here we are back with our elm face and we've got this layer on and ready to go. And it looks like we're going to do, um, we're going to start our neck on this piece. So we'll finish up the shoulder and work into a neck. I'm running out of this material, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do as a design in this neck, but I'll think about that and get back to it. Let's get to turning. Okay, so now what I need to do is just sand this flat and determine what I'm gonna do to finish this piece off. A lot of times I'll mimic something from the design, bring back at least two of those colors, um, 
but I have almost out of this red elm so I may do something um, a little different I've got to think on that but for sure I know I need to sand this flat and we'll work on this design element well on our elm vase here um, I'm running out of the red elm that I need for this piece so for this neck I chose a design that will hopefully allow me to finish it off uh, with the little bit that I have left but we'll see so what we need to do is get to turning on this piece and we are going to split this ring um, we're going to use a quarter inch of this split it off and reuse this a little bit further up on this neck but it's looking really good I'm really happy with this wood um, hopefully I can go back to that store and buy some more and I'm excited to see what a finish looks like on this piece here's our piece after we parted off um, this other half of this and we're left with a layer that's uh, really close to this thickness so we're going to keep adding we'll reuse this piece uh, further on up the design but it's looking really nice i've glued up our next layer on our red elm face and it is comprised of South American walnut or no gal and maple and yellow heart um, pieces that alternate and the idea is is to part this off at a quarter of an inch and we'll reuse this uh, layer underneath it and it'll make like a oh a necklace design or something like that on on this uh, area up here it's a little bit darker than I'd like but it'll be some nice contrast between this lighter design and here I like to make this design not really compete with that but again I want your whole eye to look and move up on this piece so we'll see how it looks when we're finished but I decided to use yellow heart and maple um, to tie in um, colors from here to here not the red or the brown um, because it would get lost in this darker band, but uh, that's the idea, so let's get to turning. So here's what our piece looks like after we just got through turning. We um, split that layer off very nicely. You can kind of see what it's going to look like. You can see inside that thing too. So we're gonna glue on that other layer and get it back on the lathe as quick as we can. Well, here's our red elm vase with this next layer glued on and again this was the remnant of this layer here and this will complete the design part of our neck we're going to add one more layer of red elm on the top just to cap it off but um, it's looking pretty good so let's get this kind of cleaned up and go glue that next layer on well here we go um, just got that turned. This is what that looks like by repeating this design, um, keeping this in the center. Uh, we've got an extra half of this that maybe we'll use sometime down the road on another project. Maybe we won't, but kind of had to do it this way because I was running out of this material. I've got just enough to cap this off. So we'll use it and get this next layer on. Well, I almost ran out of material. I had this piece left, which is all cracked, and I had to use some of it. It's got some cracks here, but they only were about a quarter of an inch deep into the wood. And we are planning on only using a quarter to three eighths of this material. We're going to split this off as well, so <sighs> it's a close one. But let's get it on the lathe and get turning. Yeah, so I'd say that came out pretty well. It still needs some sanding, but that's what we wanted. So, tomorrow. Here is a before without finish. I put a coat of sealer on it and should bring out a lot of the colors. So, I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. And here it is with its sealer on it. 
it's looking good i'll let that dry and then start to apply some uv protected finish and help lock those colors in and keep them good and, and fresh so here it is with the sealer coat applied you'll need several more coats of a different finish uh, i've been using a uv uh, marine finish it's made from a uh, tongue oil to help keep the colors fast and so they don't fade out with the uv lights but i'm happy with this elm project and be more excited to see it off the lathe and um, in somebody's collection thanks for thanks for watching my video this one i hope you found interesting and i hope to make some more so please like comment and subscribe and as always thanks for watching